everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing a brush update video. So when I started my YouTube channel back some time ago, that was actually one of my earlier videos that I did, um, brushes and their price points. Since then, my collection has grown and I have had several requests to do an updated brush video talking about my favorites, um, different purposes, price points, and etc. So we're gonna go ahead and do another video on brushes today. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. We'll go over these one by one quickly. So the first one I want to feature, and I know this is not a brush. I totally, I totally, totally get it. However, it has been an addition to my brush collection for the last few months and I absolutely love it so I wanted to share it with you guys. I did do a short video on this painting sponge um, a little while back so you can always catch that in my library if you want to do that. I show you guys painting with this some drawer fronts and I absolutely love this. First of all it's easy to hold, it's got almost kind of like a nice handle built in. You can reuse these if you're using water-based products, warm soapy water to clean up and you're good to go. Their price point is super reasonable, $3. If you're looking for these though, like at your local hardware store, Lowe's or Home Depot, I would say you're probably not going to find them. I have not had any success trying to find them locally. I did order these online. These are from Country Chic Paint. I do know there are several paint lines that do carry um, these paint sponge. Dixie Belle is another one. Um, and there's one other that's escaping my brain right now. But search for painting sponges online and you will find these guys. So their purpose is not only just for being a painting sponge, but I use these for top coating and they're excellent. So um, no overlap lines. They work well on large surfaces. And again, if you're using the water-based products, then you can go ahead and wash out and reuse Oil base is going to be a little tougher to try and clean out of this without compromising the sponge and having it kind of flake or chunk out. So I would suggest using water-based um, products with these and you'll be able to reuse them. So just wanted to add that to my brush video. And then we'll go ahead and jump into the basic foam brush. So um, for a foam brush, I like to use this for um, top coating, not the large surfaces, but the edges and maybe in between certain smaller areas. Um, I also use these for priming. They're great for priming. So I'm one of those people, I just talked about this in one of my other videos, I don't cross over my brushes. If I have paint brushes, I let them be paint brushes. And if I need to use something for top coating, I find something different to use. So I use my brushes dedicated for each purpose. It's just me, it's the way I like to do it. You can do it however you like. I'm here today just to give you guys some different suggestions. So this one I do use for top coating, I use for priming, and I also use for staining. Um, they, they work excellent to apply your stain on your piece. So there are, just keep in mind, there are different qualities of foam brushes. They are not all created equal. Um, for instance, these come from my woodworking store, Rockler. I get them in, I think either a 12 or 20 pack, I'll have to look, and um, on sale $5.99 for the bunch, small, medium, and large, and $7.99 regular price. Not a bad price point, but they are a quality sponge. They're not gonna fall apart on you. Um, I don't know if some of you have used the cheaper ones and the foam comes right off of the um, handle. Um, I would not recommend the ones from Dollar Store or even Harbor Freight, not my favorite for this brush. Just don't find that it holds up well. Again, if you're using a water-based product, you can wash out and reuse, so keep that in mind. And then we will talk about this guy, and this is our chip brush, two inch chip brush. I get these at Harbor Freight. Um, the price point is $12 for a box. I think that's like a dozen. These do have a purpose. They are not my favorite brush, but I do keep them in the shop for small projects. This is 100% pure bristle brush. So with that, you tend to shed. So who wants to pick hairs out of their paint job? Nobody. So I would not recommend using this, a chip brush for a full piece. Small projects is fine. Maybe you are, um, here, I'll give you an example. So these are my paint samples that I show my customers to pick colors when they come. And sometimes I'll use the chip brush to do my little sample sticks, um, maybe a frame, maybe um, dry brushing, um, whitewashing, I have used these for. These are a toss away brush, so once you're done, you're pretty much done. So they do have a purpose and they are good to have in the shop, just not one of my favorites that I use often but I did want to mention. 
Then I have, this is my oldest and dearest friend. This brush has been with me from the very beginning. I actually painted my first piece with this brush. You can kind of see it has been through the ringer. There is no label left on it. This is an Annie Sloan brush. When I first started, that was the paint that I started with, and so I purchased the brush as well. As far as the price point, it's been a long time since I've purchased one of these, but it's in the 30 range, I think. Um, this brush is since retired in my brush caddy of no longer used brushes. I don't have the heart to throw it out since it was my first brush. Um, the top has not really worn well. It is five years old, but, um, and as far as comfort goes, it just wasn't a brush that after I started discovering other brushes that I really liked as much. So um, they're not bad and they do serve a purpose. Um, I would say for a more textured look when you're uh, maybe using a blending look or a dry brush look, um, but they are also kind of in between like a oval and a round brush so they don't have the ability to get into the corners unless you're kind of really shoving it in there. So not my most favorite brush anymore, but it did serve me well in the beginning. So there's that. Then since we're talking about Annie Sloan, I do want to mention their wax brush and I still do use this wax brush. This one's actually new. I just bought this a few months back. I have three total. Um, I like to use one for a dark wax, one for clear wax, one for black wax. It's just my preference. You can use one and wash it thoroughly and dip it into another wax. It doesn't matter. Um, but these are really nice. Um, I prefer to uh, put my wax on with a brush. Some people just like to put it on with a rag and wipe it off with a rag and that's totally fine too. I find for application purposes, I just really feel comfortable using a wax brush. This is a very comfortable short handled brush easy to hold. So just wanted to mention that one there. Not a paintbrush, but it is in my brush collection. And then we're going to break it up a little bit and we'll talk about a more economical brush. This is the Wooster brush. I believe Lowe's. I, it might even be Lowe's and Home Depot that carry. I can't remember if they carry both. I think they do. Wooster and Purdy are their brush lines. This is a Wooster Pro. I would suggest if you're going to go with the, either one of those Wooster or brush lines, use their Pro. They're a little bit better quality. Um, it's a synthetic brush. Um, you won't lose brush hairs. Um, and it's a really nice brush. They come in all different sizes. Their price point is between 10 to $30, depending on what size you're going for. So if you're just getting into painting and you do want a good quality brush at a good price point, these are good brushes. Start with these guys, you won't be sorry. They do make some of the short handle brushes as well. So if this isn't your thing or you just need some variety, definitely check out um, you know, their different size brushes. So there's that one. I still use that today for certain projects. Just depends on what I'm working with and what brushes are currently tied up. I will use this one because it does leave a nice, good, clean finish as well. And then we have these guys here. These are the Stallmeister brushes. Um, these kind of pair with Fusion Mineral Paint. When you go to buy Fusion at your local retailer or on their website, they feature the Stallmeister brushes. These are from the Netherlands. They are a really cool synthetic. I think it's a mixture. I think these are synthetic and natural brush, bristle brushes. These, um, this one is their round brush, and I think this is their oval brush. These are newer, so you can tell I have not used these very much. Um, I do really like them. They have their purpose for sure. They have 17 different is it 17 different sizes and seven different style brushes. So you do get quite a variety with the Stallmeister brushes. They've been around for a long, a long time. They are a very good quality brush, easy cleanup, and very nice to use. So they are a comfortable brush as well. Um, their handles, this one, as you can see, this is an awfully long handle. So in the case where you're maybe trying to get in between, and when I say in between, maybe like dresser drawers, this may not work so well. So look on their website to see what other choices, but with that many choices, I'm sure you're bound to find one that you will like. I do like these brushes and they do get used. So these are great brushes. Oh, their price point. So here we're moving up a little bit. So their price point ranges from 25 up to $66 depending on size of the brush. So there's that. And then as we move to the very end of the video, we're going to talk about my most favorites. And these are my four clean ones. I do have more. I think in total I have 11 Klingon brushes. I know it's kind of weird. Why do I have so many brushes? But 
I do a lot of work, so having as many brushes as I possibly can, and I didn't buy these all at once, you guys. It's been years that I've been building my brush collection. So I do still have my first Klingon brush, which I have since retired because I put it to work really, really, really hard. And in the beginning, I only had one brush, so I used it for everything. So as I progressed in my, my work and my business, I obviously invested in more brushes. Let's just go through these quickly. This is my most trusty brush. This is the F50. Um, it is a flat top brush. It is their larger brush, and I absolutely love this. This is probably the, I have four of these. So this is the staple of my shop, and I paint most all my pieces with this guy. And then they do make, which I have, they do make an F50, which is this one here, and a, what they call a shorty. So that is great for in between those crevices and corners and inside those um, you know drawer areas that you need to get to so they do make an f50 and a shorty so there's that and then they have um, this is their f30 which is basically the same as the f50 just smaller right so you need the smaller you need different size brushes and I do talk about that a lot always have a larger and a smaller brush on hand because there's different times where you're going to need different brushes and it's great when I just put you know one by my side, start with one, and then I can pick up the other. So that's awesome. And then this is one of their round brushes, and or this is, I don't know if they call this round or oval because they do have the ones that are more pointed too. But this is a, a F40. I think this is F40. And this love this brush. So these different shapes are great for different areas and different pieces. So let's say you're painting, you know, a hutch and you've got to get up there in the corner and you need maybe a smaller pointed brush or a round brush. These are awesome. So check out their website. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a link um, as well as right now I have a discount code for Klingon brushes um, through Wise Out Paint. So I'll put that in the video too if you guys are interested in that. Um, I just absolutely am a huge Klingon fan. And this was an addition that I made to my brush collection, this huge brush. This is the B10, and I have used this uh, twice now. I've actually used this on very large pieces, so it's awesome. So when my F50 just can't cut it because it's too big of a piece, I use this guy. So this is really fun to have. Now obviously you aren't going to get this into a paint can, unless it's a gallon. Um, and so I always pour out my paint into a um, disposable dish and work from there. But I really like this one. I didn't think at first when I bought it, it was kind of like an impulse buy. I thought, I'm getting it, because that is cool. And then I thought, am I really gonna use this? And yes, I have used this. So this is kind of handy to have for those extra large projects. So my favorites, are the Klingon brushes, the Stahlmeister brushes, and the uh, Wooster brush. I do like those brushes. I can tell you that the most used brush in my shop is the Klingon, and that is the most referred brush that I tell people about. Um, just because since I've started using those, uh, I think I started using those four years ago. Uh, right after my Annie brush, that is when I went to Klingon, and I have never regretted it. Um, they are excellent as far as minimizing that brush stroke, um, and they're just an easy brush to work with, an easy brush to clean. Anyway, that is it for my brush update video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I really enjoy doing these videos for you, and I appreciate the suggestions, um, and hopefully, hopefully that was helpful to you guys. So thank you so much for being subscribers. Keep subscribing so you can get all of my videos and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you so much.